if it is a Transformers character, it's going to be an Autobot. What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is the web series we're talking about Transformers last night. This is episode number 81, and I want to say happy birthday to Brandon Webb, XX Dragon Lord XX, Andres Dos Vlogs and Toy Reviews, CJ Nightmare, JB Studios, Lance Green, and Wrench. Happy birthday to all y'all. Hope you have a good one. Thank you for being part of the Raging Nation. Also, a big special shout out goes up to Cornelius Smith for being awesome. And you're probably wondering, how did he become awesome? Well, he was always awesome, but he became more awesome by being interactive and by being interactive i mean giving me the opportunity to be interactive with him and that is by commenting i told you guys in the past that i enjoy reading all your comments whether it be on the rage nation facebook page or on the youtube videos i enjoy reading your comments and i encourage it because if you comment a lot and consistently, I start remembering you. And I start remembering you by name. And I just want to acknowledge that, Cornelius. Thank you so much for all your comments. And thank you to everybody that has been interactive. I enjoy reading all your comments. And also, the last shout-out goes out to Corey Bradley for sharing with me this awesome Transformers Age of Extinction Grimlock artwork. This is amazing. Keep up the good work. Keep on drawing. This is fantastic. And I want you guys to show some support to Corey by hitting that like button. I want to dedicate all these likes to Corey. And if you really enjoyed this piece of artwork, then please hit that like button. Anyways, thanks for sharing that with me. Keep up the good work. You are very talented. All right, let's talk about the filming of Transformers last night. And we're going to first start off by talking about toys. And I'm just going to quickly talk a little bit about toys. And uh, a lot of people were wondering, when are we going to see the first toys? Well, that's going to happen in Toy Fair. But uh, New York Comic Con is happening right now. And Hasbro decided to do an early push. And that is by showing off the Transformers Optimus Prime, the last night voice changing helmet and this comes with i think 21 pre-recorded phrases and of course it's a voice changer it'll change your voice to kind of what sounds like peter cullen as optimus prime so pretty awesome the last uh other um, bit of 20s that i have for you guys is that takara tomi decided to uh um, come up with this um, 10th anniversary line and that is to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Transformers live action films and that is by reissuing toys that already exist from the last four lines and these are toys that some of you guys might already have but they're gonna make a couple of tweaks to them and I don't know how much you can really tweak these characters but um, they probably put a little paint changes here and there. However, Grimlock and Strafe come with little Dinobot riders. And I'm talking about a mini Optimus Prime and a little Bumblebee. I was hoping that we could buy those things separately. But if you want them, you got to buy it as a whole. That Evasion Mode Optimus Prime looks pretty cool with all the weathering and that battle damage. Looks really awesome. But anyways, I'm going to see it for myself in person. I'll decide if I really want some of these guys or if none at all. Anyways, moving on, let's talk about the actual filming. Remember Santiago Cabrera? He joins the, uh, the cast as a Transformers Reaction Force soldier. And he's doing a little bit of filming. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of him lately, but he's back. And he looks like he is back um, in the scene at Stonehenge. And while they're done filming at Stonehenge, they're probably filming a scene which they're going to attach on um, geographically in the Stonehenge scene. Because here he is in uniform. You see two Blackhawks. And if you remember, in the Stonehenge scene, there were two Blackhawks. And a lot of people are probably wondering if those two Blackhawks are Decepticons. Well, this is my opinion. I don't think it's Decepticons at all. Um, they are just modes of transportation, just like all those other vehicles. Now, originally, I thought that those vehicles could be Bruticus or Combaticons, right? Um, it could still be Combaticons, but if they are, they're hiding it really, really, really well. After all, we haven't really been seeing these um, vehicles do anything, um, I, um, I guess, uh, harmful or hurtful to the Autobots, or maybe we haven't seen it yet. But in any case, if they really are Decepticons, maybe when they transform, they kick out all the humans, and then they form Bruticus. I don't know, but it's a possibility. I'm just thinking that they're not Decepticons. Now, Santiago Cabrera's character is pretty interesting for the movie. The reason why I say that is because only in Transformers, the very first film, was there actual soldiers that uh, were um, characters. And by that, I mean 
Um, characters that had lines of dialogues, rem uh, lines of dialogue. Remember when they were at the be very very beginning of the movie in the first film? They were in the Osprey, and you saw uh, a Lennox. Uh, um, uh, 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 Lennox and Epps and the two other guys and they were talking about gators and you know like eating alligators and stuff like that and um, that uh, that was a scene of dialogue which involved four soldiers now they didn't have that in the the further sequels all the actual um, military personnel were played by actual military personnel except for that 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 young guy on uh, that came off the parachute uh, that said you know I can find my own ride home sir you know that guy <laughs> um, Aside from him, everybody else was actually played by military personnel. So something tells me that, you know, he's going to have an, uh, lines of dialogue and also perhaps he's going to play a, a, a big part as part of the trans Transformers reaction force. All right. So moving on, let's talk about some of the other characters. Check out this photo that was um, presented from the Transformers social media accounts. And this is to symbolize that Isabella Moner is done filming. She is wrapped up. Mark Wahlberg has one more week of filming, which is actually this week. So he'll be done by the end of the week. And I don't know about Laura Haddock and Josh Duhamel. So Isabella Moner is done. She can move on to other projects. Here's Lord J. Haddock uh, in a photo with Bumblebee, posted by the Transformers Instagram account. And check this out. Anthony Hopkins now has Twitter. So Mark Wahlberg was making this big announcement was, uh, with, with Anthony Hopkins. So you can tweet at him and hopefully uh, he can um, tweet back. Anyways, once again, I wanted to I want to direct you to the Instagram account of Aaron09345, who I would like to say is the premier Instagram account for following all the filming of Transformers last night. He's been very, very uh, proactive about getting all these photos and videos captured on his Instagram account. And once again, great job. Give him a follow, show him some support, and He's got new photos for us, and check this out. Apparently, they were filming in an area called Farringdon, and the filming involves uh, Cogman and the lady. And, oh, there's Bumblebee back there, and this is a photo from Jess Patel. Jamie Harris uh, tweeted a photo of the sign. It says, caution, filming in progress. This was also at Farringdon. Um, Please be aware that we are currently filming in this area for a major motion picture. The producers and crew of High Command Productions Limited would like to apologize for any inconvenience caused during the preparation and filming of this production. We appreciate your cooperation and thank you for your patience. So, obviously, um, they're shutting down the area, um, but it's going to cause a little bit of inconvenience for people. And Bumblebee is seen right here. Uh, this is uh, uh, tweeted from uh, Insightful End and... It says, lots of colorful visitors outside of our London studio today. And here's another shot from uh, Jonathan Herschler. Very, very nice. You see uh, uh, London cops with uh, motorcycles. Now, here's an interesting shot. This is from Jamie Harris. Uh, hashtag fact man is tricky on a film set, particularly in the middle of Farringdon. A Mark Wahlberg is about doing something called Transformers 5. And this looks like they're filming um, some interior scenes. Mark Wahlberg is probably inside. They're lighting it from the outside, so most likely there's going to be something going on in that building. And we'll find out when the movie comes out. And also, uh, check this out, Butcher's Hook tweeted a photo of Bumblebee parked outside of the of Butcher's Hook and Cleaver and Fuller's Ale and Pie House. Uh, I'm just thinking that this is a scene that actually takes place outside of that area, not actually inside. Otherwise, maybe Mark Wahlberg needs to have a pint. I don't know. <laughs> oh, check this out. Now, you'll notice that the title of this video is called uh, uh, New Autobot, okay, edition. And... I'll be completely honest, I don't know if this is going to be a new Autobot. Check this out. This was posted by Aaron09345. And this is, um, well, let's check out some more photos. It's covered up. And, of course, whenever they reveal new vehicles, they always cover it up. Okay. Here is another photo. Uh, this was tweeted by uh, Insightful Enf. And here's the reveal. Lots of colorful visitors outside of our London studio today. Hashtag Transformers 5. And this is something very, very sleek. It is silver. And from what I've read, it's called the Le Echo Lassie. And this is like an electric car from China. Um, that's all I know. Okay, that's all I know about this vehicle. And they're keeping it pretty secret. Oh, or this is like a... 
based on what I'm seeing here, you know how it has that thing at the top? It could be one of these driverless cars, like these self-driving cars. And it's from China, so uh, ugh, I don't know how uh, how reliable that could be. But anyways, Tiki GB posted another photo of the rare. This uh, seems to be parked outside of that building, which I mentioned was probably where they're filming the uh, the in, in doing interior scenes in. And finally, Tiki GB posted a video of the La Echo La C driving out, and this is a pretty big deal because they're actually filming it drive out and I say that because this is not the first time where they've introduced characters or not characters vehicles at the last minute Transformers Revenge of the Fallen the Chevy Jolt which ended up the Chevy Volt which ended up being Jolt was introduced at the last minute it was a brand new car introduced by Chevrolet and it was an electric car or rather a hybrid car and they wanted to find a way to imp, uh, to incorporate him, him into the the film, and so they added him in. And there was only very very little scenes filmed of Jolt as an actual vehicle, okay. And then there's Transformers: Age of Extinction, where they introduced the Trumpchi E Jet, which is, I, I believe, it's also an electric car or hybrid car, but it's also from China. But it was only featured outside of. KSI headquarters in Chicago and that was the only scene that it was featured in it was there for only what three seconds that's if you could even see it at all or notice it it was just parked in front of KSI headquarters and uh, that's where Stanley Tucci's character Joshua Joyce came out of so even though China introduced a brand new car like an innovative vehicle it didn't really do anything. It wasn't anything significant. A lot of people made a big deal about it thinking that it could be a new character. It wasn't, okay? At least Jolt was actually a character, but that was from Chevy, right? So, now we have the um, Leco Lessie. I don't even know how they came up with that name. It's a weird name, but this this is a their, one of their uh, selfless driving car. No. <laughs> Uh, driverless cars or self-driving cars, whatever you want to call it, okay? But it's a new innovative vehicle. And China, or rather this Chinese uh, car manufacturing company, obviously wanted this vehicle to be in the production because, well, first of all, of course, the production, they appreciate the box office money that they get from China, so they got to pander to China. And one of the things that they're going to do is, of course, put one of these big, big uh, 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 companies, main pro products into the video, um, into the, the, the filming, into the production. So that's what they're doing. Now, I was about to say that this vehicle is only going to be um, uh, just parked there, just like it, the, the Trumpchi E-Jet, which was just parked there. But they actually showed scenes of it being filmed. And not only that, it looks like a big scene. Well, I'm not talking about big scene with explosions, but it's a big deal because they're they're filming it driving. They're using the big camera crane. I mean, this is in no way evidence that this is going to end up being an actual transformer. But the fact that it's being filmed while driving shows us something. That really tells us something. If it was a parked car, then they would have just parked it. Okay, but it's driving, so that can mean something. Now, let's just say theoretically, it's an actual character. If it is an actual character, it's a last minute addition. And if it's a last minute addition, I'm gonna call it right now, if it is a Transformers character, it's gonna be an Autobot. The reason why I say it's gonna be an Autobot, Autobot because there is no way in hell that this Chinese company or even the Chinese government would allow this vehicle to become a Decepticon. China has these huge censorship laws about their film about Hollywood films coming into China that they cannot have the uh, um, they cannot have them being represented as bad. Otherwise, it, gonna, it cannot be shown. This vehicle cannot end up being a Decepticon. Otherwise, it's uh, people will, the Chinese people will think, "Hey, what the hell, man? Our cars are evil. They're bad. It's no good. What is it?" Because when when Jet Li filmed Lethal Weapon Four. And he played a bad guy. He was criticized uh, by that. He was criticized for that by his own people. And they said, "Hey, what the hell, man? You make us all look bad." So they're not going to repeat that, obviously. So 
I don't think it's going to be a Decepticon. If it is actually going to be a Transformers character, it's going to be an Autobot. Okay, so that's what I have to say about that. And that's all I'm going to say about that for now. Moving on, what about that giant set piece involving King Arthur's Knights and Saxon Invaders? Well, it looks like that is finally happening sometime later this week or next week. And the reason why is because here's another post from Aaron09345. I'm telling you, you guys gotta follow him. He's got all the he's got all the um the the the, the stuff covered. He's got you all covered. He says the Transformers 5 set is rolling out to Pinewood Studios today and willing and will be moving on to Bournewood on Saturday, the 8th, October 2016. I was told they are going to be doing a big action scene, so I'll definitely be down there tomorrow. One other movie that was filmed here was Gladiator. I'll keep you guys posted on what happens. And check out this photo tweeted by Wonder Media. 50, yes, 50 hot men on horses. Hashtag feel good Friday with at Lucy Courtney one in the Bourne Woods. Hashtag Transformers 5. Hashtag want to go walking later. So check this out. Here is evidence of prep work for the battle that is going to be taking place. Now I'm thinking this is going to be a flashback sequence. And I mentioned prep work because if you look closely, these are just guys that are not even in costume. costume. They're probably doing a test run with all the horses and the riders before they actually outfit them in the actual costumes that are going to be going to, that is going to be taking place uh, in the next couple of days. So that scene is actually happening and just like I said before it is uh, going is most likely going to be a flashback sequence. Uh, I don't think there's actually time travel in, tra time travel involved in the sense that they're going back in time. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's move on. And move on to questions. That's all I really have to say about any of the news. The TF Nerd asks, how many car chases do you think will be in the last night or there, or are there just two huge chases? London and Arizona. I think that's it. I think it's just London and Arizona. We've seen all the filming uh, of, the, uh, of the London filming, uh, the car chase. It's a big sequence involving Bumblebee, Barricade, and all the other Autobots. And then there's the Arizona filming, which involves some pretty big explosions. So that's all I think there is in terms of car chases. Now, if you look back at the previous Transformers films, there were always only two car chases. All right, Transformers 1, Bumblebee and Barricade. Trans uh, and then the highway chase, which involved Bone Crushers. Revenge of the Fallen, the opening sequence, and then right before um, the forest fight. Dark of the Moon, of course, you have the big freeway chase. And then there was, uh, what else was there? Uh, uh, um, okay, the, the freeway chase. <laughs> but that was pretty huge, okay? But it was followed by, you know, like, like other action sequences. And then Age of Extinction had that, uh, that, that chase that involved, uh, of course, Stinger and Galvatron, and then there was, uh, I believe there was, uh, uh, was there, I can't even remember, oh yeah, uh, the human chase, there was the human chase in, the, in Texas, right? So, two car chases, I think that's it, because that's a pretty standard number for car chases. Lord Louie, Ask, uh, wouldn't it be awesome if Bumblebee was the one that kills Megatron? Just like in Transformers Prime, yes, it would be awesome. I think that uh, if he talks, and then if Megatron really start beating them down, and Bumblebee becomes the unlikely hero, I think that people are going to start liking him again. I think that people are tired of seeing Bumblebee, and the main reason why pe people are tired of seeing Bumblebee is because he can't talk, and that is getting old. If they bring back his voice... And then make him a fearless warrior, and then sh it sh show him, show the audience how awesome he is when he fights with his brother in arms, and then he finally kills Megatron. I think that would really redeem him. Raza asks, "Hi, Alex, is Dino Mirage dead, or can we see him in future Transformers films six, seven, and eight or with a different vehicle mode?" I'm thinking that he's done. I'm thinking that he's definitely not coming back as a Ferrari because of. Uh, you know, all, all the, you know, the, Ferrari just doesn't want their vehicles portrayed in that way. Not only that, the voice actor who played Dino is gone. He's no longer with us. So um, that is going to be kind of tough. And um, yeah, it, it, if he's coming back, he's going to be coming back as a different voice and also as a different vehicle. That's the only way that um, Dino can come back. DJ Fragaman asks, what do you say about the Dinobots' presence in the Stonehenge battle, Stonehenge battle, and where do you expect the artifact? 
I think that um, the artifact um, is that staff that we see with the um, that knight at the medieval times. But then the actual, the actual, you know, the 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 thing, the MacGuffin is actually Stonehenge. I think it's actually Stonehenge, and that's why a big battle takes place there. Um, as for the Dinobots, I believe they also come in during the Stonehenge battle. Mark. Uh, Mark Creation Studios, as will Barricade, be once again voiced by Jess Harnell. I think Frank Welker did him in TF3 for some reason. Um, I don't know. That could, it could be anyone. It, it, I hope so. I mean, I hope that the original act, uh, voice actor who voiced Barricade is back because I liked his voice. It was a very, very unique sounding voice and it was very, very evil sounding. Dark Drive asks, Hey there, Alex. Have you ever wondered why we have never seen Onslaught in the London filming? Good question. And I believe that it is because um, we're going to be introduced to the Decepticons in their vehicle modes in the Arizona filming, but their vehicle modes don't really mean a whole lot in terms of we're not going to see a whole lot of them in their vehicle modes. Uh, we're going to see more of them, them in robot modes uh, in the London filming because I believe that London is actually actually makes up a huge portion of the second half of the film and so therefore the Decepticons are no longer in disguise. So because of that, they're going to show up more as robots unless some of them were already killed in Arizona. And that are the, and that is all the questions that I have for you guys, and that marks the end of this episode. And once again, I just want to remind you guys to follow Aaron09345 on Instagram. The reason why is because he is um, he's going to be doing following the production of Transformers last night for for until uh, they're done filming in uh, in the London area. So definitely show some support, give him a follow, and if you do give him a follow. Write a type in a comment and say that Rage Nation sent you there, and um, you know, uh, uh, tag me, tag me so that I know you did that, and um, I'll give you a shout out. Okay, I just want to show some appreciation for the people who actually contribute, and uh, you guys are awesome. You guys are the heroes of the Transformers community. You guys are doing a great job by doing what you do. So keep it up. Anyways, uh, th like I said, this is the end of the video, but it doesn't end here. Um, I have another episode that I'm going to film and. Once you're done watching this, watch episode number 82. Uh, I spoke to one of the concept artists and I did a little bit of an interview slash conversation. I don't want to call it an interview. I had a conversation and um, if you want to learn more about uh, concept art and, um, and if you're an artist, you're not going to want to miss the next episode because uh, we're going to have a conversation and it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know how fun it's actually going to be, but it's interesting. I found it, I think you guys will find it very, very interesting in terms of the process of creating um, the Transformers from concept to, to, um, to, uh, yeah, what they are now. <laughs> That's all I got to say. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, hit the like. Uh, enjoyed this episode, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter at Raging Nation. My name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace. Highly possible. Totally. But the only uh, thing I got to say about that is that they're turning on stealth mode to blow.